Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding program here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time, also a great newsletter. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to hit Master and Probabilities right on the right hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Master and Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now they all come with a 30 day money back guarantee. So as Steve says every day, you can get it for 29 days, no problem. So as you're coming over here, Check it out, you're gonna like it. Steve's got a lot of great education on that site on a continual basis. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, kind of enjoying the somewhat dry weather weekend that we had. I, I think it was probably dry up in, in your area too. It was, it was, yeah. it was a great yeah. weekend. Hot yeah. but great, it does, it's the summer. It, it, listen, it, it, it's probably hotter in Boston, New York than it was in Florida, folks, and we were breaking records, so. Yeah, you know. exactly, exactly. But yeah. it was nice to have a little, bit of, a, little, a little bit of dryness out there. It was. You know, so. Hey, hey, uh, hey let me ask you something. You know, the, yeah. the, the guy that won again this week, right? So he yes. won two weeks in a row, right? Tony now, Pino, yeah. Are these, now, is that the same circuit? Like, that's just the same circuit, but you don't get all the bigger golfers. You only get the bigger golfers, like at the big majors. Is that what happens? Well, when they get towards this part of the season, so oh, I think there's okay. maybe just there just maybe one more tournament. There is be right before yeah. they start the FedEx Cup. I see. So okay. yeah, so what will happen because because they they had the Scottish Open and British Open, and yeah. the guys were were overseas and so forth. You know, most of them that that are inside the cut line for the FedEx right. will take a little bit of time off and and try to hone in on some parts of their game. Cool, I get it. Okay, Tony Tony Fino. Yeah, you know he's he's been around for a long time, but has always struggled to get the ball across the goal line. Okay, except you know, I mean, he's been you know finished in the top five so many times. So it's been very cool. It's always cool to watch these guys get the ball across the goal line. And you know what it does, Tom? It, it increases their confidence. Yeah. And it, in golf or really anything that we do, isn't it really all about confidence? It is. And you know, it's incredible. There's so many good young golfers, man. It's oh. unbelievable. I mean, it was fun yeah. watching. I was just curious. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, it's just amazing. I mean, that little golf ball in that little hole, it's like well, hard to get in, man, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and these guys, these guys have changed the, uh, these guys have changed, the, the younger ones have really changed the game from the standpoint of the distance that they are hitting golf balls. Yeah. You know, with the driver, I mean, they're they're carrying the ball 300 plus yards I, you know, was, in narrow it's, fairways. It's the cantaloupe, the cantaloupe, he was 345, yeah, yeah, can right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was like wow, 345, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, I, I I love to figure out their secrets. I um I have been struggling with my driver, so I'll tell you the easiest way to to fix that or to try to fix it. And I did it this weekend. I was up on Sunday, up in Orlando playing golf with my brother and my uh, and, and one of my and my son. Yeah. And I, we play up at the, or, or this time we played at the Grand Cypress uh, Golf Resort. Nice. And the only course, well, they actually, they have two two courses now, but we played the the new course. Okay. The new course, which is really like playing the old course over in Scotland. Now, the reason why I say I like to go there when I'm struggling with my game is because the, it's the widest, the, the fairways are larger than what you'd see in a driving range. I see, okay. So, so if you want to really tinker with your game, it's hard to tinker with the game in your regular courses out there right you just you know i need i need a wider area and really i think I, I think i found you know what the issue was and it's just it just it's a confidence thing right i mean i had no confidence in my and you driver, should see steve hit the ball folks i've seen him i mean he winds up like a freaking wow <laughs> yeah well the older age though you kind of got to pair things back a little bit but look let's say, uh, last monday when we were on the line uh we were talking about how the prior friday generated both a short-term sell signal yep. and an intermediate term buy signal. Turns out that uh, since last Monday, both of those signals were correct. So let's take a little bit of time, take a look at what unfolded and then where the markets are likely going. So it was Friday, July 22nd, that was the Friday, where the daily NQ generated a bear sash candle. Now that bear sash candle was important because it was completed in an A to B equals CD pattern. That short term pot, uh, pattern then suggested that price would run to the oscillator and change line, one of the tools that's available that folks can uh, test and, and learn about in 29 days. It doesn't really cost them anything. And that's exactly what took place. Price pulled back to support, which was the bottom of its profile, and that oscillator and change line. That was done on July 26th. The only topping pattern that's currently present, there's none. 
There's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We both know that. So therefore, if we do get a bearish reversal candle, then that should set up the next uh, sell the D point pattern. And, uh, and if we do get that, that would likely bring our price target again back down to that oscillator and change line. Now that's currently printed at 12473 on Wednesday. That'll be a different figure on Friday and so forth. So, But newsletter subscribers will see this each and every uh, day and each and every morning. So in summary, Friday, July 2nd generated a bearish reversal candle. That generated a sell the D point pattern. That set up a run for support, which was its oscillator and change line in the bottom of its daily profile. Support was tested and held on July 26, and that's what set up that move higher. Now, the next bearish reversal candle that forms, that'll generate the next sell the D point pattern with, again, that daily oscillator and change line being the price target again. So let's take a look at the bullish intermediate time frame signal that also formed on July 22nd. And that was this. This was the weekly time frame chart. Now, I'm showing the NQ and the arrow, the blue arrow here is pointing to the bar that crossed over or closed above that oscillator and change line. So that was a that was an important thing to suggest we might get more rally. Well, if we take a look at each of the weekly equity futures charts, each of them closed above that oscillator and change line. And in the Dow specifically, the lower left out here, that was the first time in all of 22 that that had happened. That was a slight signal to you and I and everybody else out there to at least expect a rally. And the type of rallies, ones that typically last two to three weeks out there. So each of the weekly equity futures contract had also formed what I refer to as a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. These blue arrows are showing that pattern. Again, something that is taught to all subscribers. They get access to the videos that will teach them this pattern, which is really important. The NDX 100, as an example, it was launched in 1985. Its first weekly Rhodes momentum indicator bottom took place on October 5th, 2001. I've got the blue arrow here. Yeah. That led to a TD9 count top. Again, another pattern that I teach out there uh, that we use each and every day. And that eventually, then once it got to the TD9 count top, again, a topping pattern, that, lent, that, that moved to lower lows out there. The final bottom for the 2000 bear market formed with a Rhodes, another Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern the week of October 11th. 2002. The next weekly NQ Rhodes momentum indicator bottom marked the end of the 2007 bear market. So there was one that formed in October of 2008, and then there was one more that uh, took place in March of uh, two, March 13, 2009. That blue arrow up there. Yes. So now we're dealing with the current one, the June 24, 2002 Rhodes momentum indicator bottom out here. We've discussed several times how the counter trend rallies typically last two to three bars out there. Last week was bar number two. This suggests that we should get some type of short term top that forms uh, this week out there. But I'm in total agreement with you. Likely this is going to be a top. It pulls back with lighter volume into support, which would be the oscillator and change line again around the 12, 448 level. And then it likely sets up that next move higher. And where I think we're at, if we take a look at the 2007 bear market. We had two periods where there was a three month rally. Yeah. Yeah. and a two-month rally. I believe that's where we're in now. Likely takes the markets higher into some part of September, and then we have the Nike swoosh to the downside. I love it how deviant it is, man. It's unbelievable. All right, it really is. Come over to our website, folks, at TFNN. Check it out, Maximum Probability. You're going to get a great newsletter. You're going to understand exactly how Steve looks at the market every trading day. Look Thanks, forward Tom. to the market tomorrow, Steve.